You're watching us here on Mad About Markets and we're reporting to you live from the <laughs> case that we've made in CNBC TV. <laughs> well, let it come in. Yes, yes. there it is. Even going, yeah, we're, we're standing in our little, uh, you know, artificially created agri-tech farm <laughs> itself, so to say. But, you know, jokes apart, we're talking about the opportunities and challenges in India's agri-tech sector. In a segment, as we always call, Yays and Mays. We have the two tractors. I'll go with the Yay tractor first. Go for it. All right. How so, uh, the biggest one, of course. The thing that we talk about very often on Mad About Markets, the big yeah. transformative impact that COVID-19 has driven in the industry in and agri-tech has been. Tech. Yeah. yeah, and agri-tech has been no exception. But, you know, when we talk about agriculture in India, at the end of the day, it is still a very fragmented market and there are a large number of intermediaries, countless stakeholders, which makes the process itself quite complex. The common platform that binds everyone, whether they're fragmented or not, is the internet. Rising internet and smartphone penetration in India hmm. brings everyone together. Well, but for that internet penetration, even though it is increasing, gaining the farmer's attention and trust requires some level of offline presence as well. I completely agree with you. I mean, offline presence is important. And what is also important is rising consumer awareness, which is actually happening. And people are willing to pay for good quality products. People are willing to pay for good quality products. But what we're seeing is a decline in the share of educated and digital savvy young farmers because they don't want to be in farming anymore. They want to, you know, progress and move out to urban centers and cities. Guess who wants to be in farming? It's the private capital. They want to invest in agri-tech and the opportunities that agri provides. You know, but for all of this put together, at the end of the day, we're so dependent on rain gods and macro <laughs> variability, right? So that'll always be a huge factor for the agriculture sector. Well, where the rain gods can't help, the government gods can help. There has been a multi-pronged government push to actually go ahead and double farm income, agri-tech will be one of those drivers. But what we spoke about at the start, right? The productivity is low, farmer incomes are low, so affordability, that is one of the challenges to tackle before we really see a spurt in this sector. So let's take it there, uh, right to our guest itself. Krishna, I mean, we've spoken about the opportunities and challenges. What, according to you, are the key challenges on tech delivery, cost fragmentation of land holdings, too many stakeholders? I think there are multi-fold challenges and I'll start with the digital literacy of this whole segment itself and uh, also the cost of delivery, right? So, I, you know, right now I think in the country like India, there should be a public-private partnership because there is a hand-holding required for the penetration of this technology and the government is doing a lot on that as uh, that front also. And also the people who are interacting with the growers like agronomists or government departments or, uh, you know, agriculture departments, their people also need to uh, need to adopt this technology and take it to this last mile, right? And that I see that happening today with all the infrastructure which we have in the country to support the agriculture. That digital has been the you know the first pillar, and they are making an effort to not only the growers but also every stakeholder who is engaged in the agriculture to adopt digital, right? And th that is also happening uh, with his own pace and with this whole you know. Uh, penetration of technology, internet, smartphones, uh, you know, easy solutions, which, uh, you know, to, uh, which is actionable in terms of in hand, when it goes to the in hand of farmers are also increasing, right? So I think it has to be a collaborative approach, right? From the tech companies who are building solutions, the implementation partners who are on the ground, working closely with the growers and then helping them to adopt this kind of a technology. All right, so literacy, of course, and the cost of delivery. But Shashank, let me bring you in as well. Uh, you know, what do you think are the challenges in digi uh, digitizing this entire agriculture ecosystem and the cost of mechanizing this? Has that been a barrier? I would say too many stakeholders for sure. However, let's say if I break into two parts, which is, I mean, uh, which is uh, uh, the major factor towards the adoption side. So let's say if you go from agri business uh, or maybe from one end of food chain to another which is mostly from the consumer side to farmer side i would say where the overall agri tech fraternity is uh, as on date till the last mile you will not find problem of digitization and adoption for example again in the context of dehat uh, where we have been running our physical dehat centers it's a franchise network which is run by someone from the local community and acts as a point of transaction for the farmers in a catchment area of three to five kilometer so probably I think as far as digitization or adoption is concerned, I think we have soared up to that point. Considering all our 11,000, more than 11,000 Dehat centers are digitized, they, those micro entrepreneurs or the Dehat center owners, they have been using our Dehat business application, entire our warehouse, in fact, that's digitized. You, will, you can see each and every single SKU of inventory, whether it's input or output, it's live. So I think up to the last mile, the adoption and the digitization, I think, 
it's has been it has been solved by the agritech players but when it comes about the farmer side or the farm side i think that's where it's still i think the overall development or overall the work at the early stage but as i said earlier i think it will take its own time let's go to the bigger most important question of the discussion that we are having right now and that is will agritech transform india into a farming powerhouse krishna shashank your thoughts so uh, you know the technology is going to uh, play a key role in uh, uplifting the yield or the quality uh, from the nation point of view if you look if you compare the productivity per hectare uh, in india for for the crops versus uh, developed countries you'll find a lot of difference right they you know almost like a half of a global production uh, index now if you look at the agritech you know companies were bringing a lot of solutions and actually uh, trying to tackle those problems either modeling the It's risk I, i either modeling the risk at the farm unit level uh, tackling the climate change helping the farmer to change the behavior from the package of practices point of view which will uh, again give you a much better yield and much better quality from the same farm and you can compete globally as well with those numbers and i think that's the direction india is also moving and uh, with the reconfiguration of supply chain you know uh, consumer uh, uh, behavior is also changing in terms of the food consumption these are all driving factors towards it and uh, I, i think uh, from the technology point of view from solutioning point of view in agriculture we are in the right direction i'll break into two parts you wait for 2 3 years and you will see the size of the overall ag agritech players uh i think 3 years ago i think people have been asking about that whether agritech can go to a certain stage certain scale certain growth or not in fact and as on date you will find many agritech startups doing maybe more than annual business of you know 1000 crore already so you wait for 2 3 years in fact you will get the answer towards the scale growth along with the profitability but the second part of your question stand alone no i think stand alone forget about agritech stand alone nobody can solve uh the india or the global issues but i think the construct of agritech uh, is is to be a strong you know catalyst towards the new or towards the next green revolution of india so idea or the intent of the agritech is basically you know to create the prototypes to create the model whether it's last mile whether it's farmers financing whether it's export whether it's bio innovations and basically you know you know encouraging everyone encouraging everyone literally whether the institution or the policy makers to use and to refer those prototypes basically to inculcate in their own respective region and to basically scale it up you know for a common cause always good to have a healthy debate uh, i'm glad to hear that opposing point of view from both of you yes there is a long way to go but on that note uh, krishna and shashank thank you very much for sharing your thoughts here and with that we've come to an end of this special episode thanks for watching we'll see you next week keep farming